The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. Additional support is provided by Athern Trains. Check out all their new monthly announcements at athern.com. Additional support for the What's Neat This Week program is provided by Soundtracks, industry leaders in DCC sound technology for over 30 years and two-time Model Railroaders Reader's Choice Award winner for favorite sound decoder with our Tsunami 2. For more information, please visit our website at soundtracks.com. And as a special thank you to our What's Neat viewers, enter the code WNTW10 for a special 10% off your purchase at soundtracks.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week, show number 115 for May 9th, 2020. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat show over at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And tonight I've got with me Ron Angstead, the president of Inner Mountain. It's great to have you with us tonight, Ron. Hey, glad to be here, man. I'm excited about this. This is going to be fun. Now, I always start out this way and I'm gonna do it again. The weather's been absolutely fantastic. The rain last night stopped, thank you very much. And I got out today and did another wonderful photo shoot with puffy, beautiful clouds today. I love it when it's like that. And I shot three beautiful locomotives from Athern Trains. And this is the first time that I've ever had all three of these models in the studio at the same time. And they're from NS. Norfolk Southern SD60Es. And these are the ones that they've painted in their absolutely beautiful paint schemes, which are so pretty. The Honoring Veterans, number 6920 is the one unit that I shot outside today. It was just an exquisite looking uh, unit with the uh, ribbons on it. And of course, the 911, 911, Honoring the First Responders locomotive. I also shot that one outside today. And I've also got the beautiful NS Go Rail locomotive. That's also an SD60E. But the one thing that I got to do that I've never done before is I was able to shoot all three of them together in a photograph. They all look absolutely beautiful, sitting there just in all their glory out in gorgeous sunlight. And so Athern Trains hasn't seen these photos yet, but they're going to be very happy when they receive them. I do want to say that these units come with LED lights and Tsunami 2 sound. So thank you, George Bogatuck and all the folks out there at Soundtracks for what you guys do for Athern. Let me show you the beautiful day that we had today as you see a prototype train running in Illinois over there. That's three miles away. As I want to share with you for the very first time ever seen on video and on the show, this is the brand new SD60M locomotives that I've been photographing today. These are the Triclops locomotives and they come in BN, BNSF, Canadian Pacific, Norfolk Southern, and Union Pacific. And I shot these outside, it was so beautiful. They have removable roofs on them. Sugar Cube speakers, Tsunami 2 sound, and of course LED lights, and rubber MU hoses. I've got prototype pictures of the BNSF unit number 9206. And now let me show you the model of 9206. 06, out in all of the beautiful sunlight. These models are just gorgeous. Look at the three window panes on these. I also have a prototype photo of number 9200. This is the Burlington Northern unit. And now let me share with you the model photograph of number 9200. How about that? Look at that. And now I've also got the Union Pacific, number 6218 yellow in the sunlight. There it is to be seen. And of course, I have a Canadian Pacific unit number 6261. All of these beautiful models again are available from Athern Trains. And thank you so much for sharing these with us for the very first time you get to see these models. I, am, I wanna talk about a lot of other stuff today. And that is first of all, you know, we're just about coming to the end of the lockdown and I can't wait until uh, Missouri allows us to have 10 people or less in a group. And then at that point, we'll be able to bring the boys back in and do a show where we're actually sitting down here in the same room, albeit a distance apart from each other. But that'll be kind of exciting. We're setting it up where we're gonna have additional cameras 
and a few more lapel microphones spread out on 20 foot cords so that we can all be a safe distance and put on a, a good show showing in person all of the projects. I really miss the atmosphere of having everybody together. I, I, it's just something that I terribly miss. The one thing that I have seen is that so many of you are still modeling quite actively. I see it on Facebook, I've seen it on the internet, and that's the one beautiful thing about our hobby is the value that you add when you create. Now what do I mean by that? So many times you've got ballast or you've got a container of ground foam and those things have a little value unto themselves but it's when you put all of these components together and create the art that we create in this hobby, the realistic scenes, the operational layouts, that you add value. And it's not so much financial value as much as it is additionally the value of accomplishment and what it is that you've done, what you can share with your family and friends, the experience that you increase and learn about in the industry and the hobby as you work along. I think that's value and it's something I wanted to talk about tonight. I thought about that a little bit this week and as you know we do have sponsors to help support this show to buy equipment and keep things going and and the one thing about the sponsors is these are people that we work with where we intimately know about the product because we use them every day. We model with them, we run their models, we use the components and everything we talk about. The NCE systems that I use all the time, the TCS uh, W. UWT 100 throttle system that we're going to be talking about in the next two shows a lot because James Regeer and myself have learned a lot about this. The fact is these are all family owned companies. Some of them have been, have been in business for over 50 years in our industry and we love, to, we love that aspect of the hobby. I think, it, I think it's valuable. I think it's wonderful and it's like I always say the best hobby in the world with the best people in it. So with that Ron Tell me about how beautiful it is in that wonderful state of Colorado. <laughs> well, the weather has been fantastic lately. We've, uh, like you, we've had uh, our share of thunderstorms in the evening, a little hail night before last, but I think it's uh, 67, 68 degrees out there right now, partly cloudy and, and just a beautiful day. That's absolutely awesome. You've got quite a setting there. You've got all the models on the table that I see, and I also have a lot of your models here on the table, the stack trains, these uh, 4785 PS2 hoppers. I also pulled out some other ones today, the Evans coil cars that you all had sent us to show off on the show, and the Gunderson high cube box cars that are in a line that you call the value line of trains. They're not super detailed, the most expensive model, but yet they're absolutely fantastic looking. So it's really hats off to you for coming up with the various categories of models that fit everybody's different budget in the hobby. Right. Well, we want to uh, create a situation where it's affordable for everybody, whatever your level of modeling is. And that value line product line is, like you say, a little less detailed, but uh, also a little more affordable. And uh, for the people that love the really high detail stuff, you know, obviously Intermountain tries to set that bar very high um, all the time as a standard. That's really awesome. I see you've got an auto rack on the table and I can't tell you how much people are clamoring to see and get the auto racks from Intermountain because your see-through screens are kind of neat. Yes sir, they are. So um, what I'll do is I'll get into uh, some of these products here. I know we got a lot of great stuff to talk about today, Ken, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. I mean, what's neat? Uh, your audience is second to none, uh, a lot of great model railroad fans, and we appreciate everything you do for the hobby and for Intermountain as well, especially with everybody stuck at home right now. Um, I think you, know, you must be a, a rock star right now with everybody stuck at home. Uh, everybody's enjoying their hobby, working on their own layouts, working on their own collections, and if nothing else, looking at YouTube videos of uh, Ken Patterson and other great model, uh, model railroad YouTube videos. So. Uh, yeah, with that, uh, well, let's get into some of the product. You know, you, you nailed one of them. Um, first of all, I want to induce, introduce one of, my, uh, one of my partners that I have here with me today. Um, Doug, step over here. A lot of you know Doug from uh, trade shows or Facebook activities, but this is Doug Dollop. Hey, he's Doug. Our, he's our yeah. senior vice president. He's also our production manager for Intermountain, so he's in the trenches every day working with our suppliers, working with our customers, and working with our our own management team uh, to help produce these fantastic products. But so I'm going to ask Doug to uh, give you a close up of this one. This is the bi-level HO scale bi-level auto rack. 
I'm going to let Doug bring that over to you and you can get a closer look. It's got etched stainless steel panels, which are see-through, which is a fantastic feature. These are uh, very high level of detail, very accurate uh, compared to the actual cars. And we are bringing this out in 22 paint schemes. Wow. And, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're bringing this out in 11 paint schemes. Uh, the BNSF version has six car numbers, and all others will have four car numbers. So this will come equipped with our Intermountain Precision brass wheel sets as well. So it's a great runner, uh, as well as being beautiful. Uh, the doors are uh, are all awesome too because they operate the end doors. So. They do. They're absolutely beautiful. I have one of your bi levels right here that's absolutely tricked out and weathered on one side and then just regular weathering on the other side. And I can see straight through to all the lights that are shining in my eyes right now. It's amazing how you guys came up with the concept of having these three see-through panels, just like the prototypes, so that if one were to choose to put a load in these, you could see the silhouette of the load through the car. Absolutely, and I've seen that on, on some layouts, and it's, it, it's a fantastic uh, image when they that train is rolling by. No, good job on that. We modelers appreciate that a lot. Yeah. Um, another great HO scale product. Um, this is all brand new tooling, by the way. So this is a uh, HO scale covered hopper. It's the 4785 cubic foot. It's a PS2 CD covered hopper. This one uh, is one of my favorites because it's Monfort Feedlots right here in Greeley, Colorado, just up the street from us, about 20 miles. Uh, you've been there. In the, in the neighborhood, Ken, so uh, you're familiar with this as well. And uh, this also has etched stainless steel running boards and just exquisite detail. It's a combination of injection molded uh, plastic detail, but also some wire grabs and other etched metal grabs. And I'll have Doug uh, show you that one as well. There's some, show the, the break end and, and uh, that running board there, Doug. No, that is we also nice. did, uh, a couple of different tooling variations on this for the end frames. So uh, that allows us to do 22 accurate paint schemes with correct tooling configurations. Uh, again, equipped with uh, etched stainless steel uh, running boards and the Intermountain Precision brass wheel sets. So fantastic product there. A lot of people are enjoying those and we have those in, in stock and shipping now. Um, okay, so Got some great 40-foot boxcars uh, that have just come in and going through the inspection process and are shipping out. Uh, we have an HO scale. This is the 1937 uh, boxcar. Uh, what we've done is we've done the modified version of this, which came out in the 40s and 50s. Uh, it's got the 10-foot, 6-inch interior height, which was uh, allowed for a little more clearance and a little more room uh, for capacity for the freight. How about that? I love, I love the fact that you guys are using KD couplers on these cars. I mean, they are bulletproof when you're pulling a long train. Great point. And all the HO scale uh, products have the KD couplers, and we just, we just love their products. And uh, Alan and the guys at KD are just wonderful to work with. So, um, and that's another family company. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... Um, that 1937 AAR boxcar originally was a 10 foot zero inch height. And then the modified version came out a few years later. And that's the one that we modeled accurately here with the, with the 10 six modified car. Um, HO scale will have 16 paint schemes. The N scale version of that we're also coming out with very nice uh, product as well. Doug, can you show them the, uh, the slogan on, on the one side and then the, uh, the map artwork on the, uh, the reverse side? So these are all decorated accurately with the uh, Santa Fe slogans, um, El Capitan, uh, the Texas Chief, the Chief, uh, the Scout, um, and uh, and then they have the uh, obviously the correct version of the map. There's a couple different versions. That's of straight right. Map. You've got the straight line map on that one, and the other map that Santa Fe put on their freight cars was the curved line map, which was an earlier variant, an earlier earlier era. You got it. <laughs> what I love about you, Ken, you always do your homework. That, that, oh. episode, that episode that you did on our HO scale PFE reefer uh, product release was wonderful. And actually, I'm going to mention that car 
Uh, but I'm not going to go into a lot of details. I'm going to refer your audience to episode, I think it was 113 a few yes. weeks ago. Yes. You made, and, uh, you made me do my homework on that one because you sent me six cars and each one was different and they weren't just different on one side, they were different on both sides, which kind of threw me off. As you saw during the original edit of that show, I said, quote unquote, and that's this car right uh, here. And I was looking for it. And that's when I realized they were different on both sides. And I actually went through that show in post edit and made sure that I got all those details right. And I actually went outside and did a second day of photographing those because whoever does your research, I'm telling you, they're worth their weight in gold because a, I mean, I, I didn't even know. Yeah. We got a wonderful team of, uh, of experts that work on those, uh, those research. And obviously we, we have great uh, resources with, library um there's obviously the wonderful uh, pfe book that was co-written by uh tony thompson and who was the other author to that book you guys know ah, the one I'm thing that that amazes us and i've heard james regeer say this and i've said this oh, everybody has said this the freight cars in the old days they would come out with a box car and they would put 15 or 25 different paint schemes on it and we loved it it was great but right. now you guys are really researching and getting so era specific with everything. It just adds that much more value to what it is we do when we're watching our trains run by on the layout, Ron. Right. Well, I appreciate that. And, uh, and a shout out to Ken Patterson for doing his homework on the Reaper review. <laughs> I'll tell him. <laughs> um, let's see here. Well, so... Obviously some great products. You mentioned the coil car, the Gundersons that you've got on your table. Um, I didn't bring those out today because I know you've done some review on those products in the past, so we appreciate that. Uh, those are available and in stock and shipping uh, every day. Um, I do want to mention that uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about our Intermountain wheel sets. Yes. We have these precision brass wheel sets in N scale, HO scale, and O scale. And they're really popular and great runners in all three scales. Um, and I would encourage any of your audience to give them a try, even if you're upgrading, uh, you know, product that you've had for a few years. You know, from even if it didn't come with an Intermountain product, you can a lot of times retrofit our brass wheels into those other cars and improve the uh, performance on your layout uh, for all your freight activity. Uh, this HO scale, uh, 33 and 36 inch uh, version of these brass wheel sets. We have sold over 10 million wheel sets wow. since we brought those onto the market, and that's not counting all the cars that we've installed them on and sold the cars. These are 10 million wheel sets sold independent of the freight cars that, that we install them on. About 20 years ago, your father and I spent a little bit of time down here in the studio before it was a studio, and I showed him P87 wheels, and we started discussing prototype wheel sets. And I did an article for Mainline Modeler at or about that time that wheels are models too. And one day your father sent me a set of wheels and said, you know what, we're coming out with these and I want you to test them on various club layouts in St. Louis and see how they perform. So I'm so happy that he has created that because that was something back then that I followed very closely when I had the Midwest Valley Modelers modular layout and that was the wheels, the prototype thickness of them, the way they looked because it was just back then I paid a lot more attention to detail than I will admit that I do now. Yeah, well I, I appreciate you mentioning that um, and since you brought up my father, Frank Angstead. Frank's the best. Frank was, uh, you know, Frank was the leader and the and the captain of this uh, company for years and years and years. He, uh, the team brought me back uh, a few years ago, I don't know, six or seven years ago, uh, to help run the company. My father is still very actively involved and just loves this business. Uh, a lot of you have seen him at the trade shows recently. Um, he's still involved in our meetings uh, each week when we're allowed to have them, and. Uh, but he could not be here today, uh, I'll have to admit. And some people ask, you know, how's his health? How's he doing? He's getting up in years. I'm proud to admit that he's out on the golf course today. So <laughs> just, just fine. Um, I also, uh, I think we have time for a quick story. You know, speaking of, uh, of trade shows, we, we like to go to trade shows. I mean, one of, one of the things that I love most about this hobby is obviously the interactions with the people. You know, guys like you, like your audience, like the, uh, the Intermountain customers, suppliers, people that we see at the trade shows. 
uh, people that we get feedback from. It's just such a people business, such an interactive business, and that's that's really the thing that I love most about this hobby. Um, we were at the Rocky Mountain Train Show in mid-March, and that was right before the uh, virus shutdown uh, occurred. And so that's the last train show that many of us have been to. Um, we haven't been to one since, and we don't see another one in the r relatively near future. Um, but I got a story about uh, another show that we went to in, in Milwaukee, the, uh, the Train Fest. Massive show, it's a great event. Uh, Intermountain has a booth in that every year, and we love seeing everybody there. I know, Ken, you've been a, a number of times and have done uh, some great footage from, from that show. But we were walking through the airport, and uh, since you bring up my father, I was, uh, we were on the way to get our plane, and uh, we walked by a podium, and it was an unmanned podium, and uh, Doug, I'm going to have you show this close up to the camera, but... Um, I hear my father say, watch my bag. And I said, what? We're right in the middle of the hall. And he sets down his briefcase. And the next thing I do, I look up and I see my father, Frank Angstead, at the podium. And it happens to be the Milwaukee County Sheriff podium. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, he was, he was uh, having a little fun, but he was proudly at that podium greeting uh, the travelers as they walked by and letting, giving them confidence that he was, uh, that we had a new sheriff in town, I guess. How about so, that? Sheriff Frank Angstead. Yeah. Um, and, you know, while we're on the trade show topic, too, I wanted to mention that, you know, we don't know when we're going to be able to gather and congregate again, you know, either with club layouts and meetings or, um, or at a convention for the hobby. But some of the creative uh, leaders in the industry have put together some ideas, and I really like it. Um, one thing that I wanted to bring up is there's an event scheduled in July. It's on July 16th, actually. And uh, Train World and James Wright uh, have, are cooperating to put together an event. And it's going to be a national virtual train show event. And they've asked us to participate. I'm going to show this to you here. I think it's on Train World's Facebook page, and you you can log on there. There's a bunch of great manufacturers that are already committed, and we've got our virtual booth already spoken for, so we're going to participate in this event, and hopefully we'll have some other great new products to talk about at that point. That's but fantastic. So that's Thursday, July 16th, and it's going to be sure. a virtual NMRA show. As many of you saw, we did that video with the principals that were doing the NMRA show here in St. Louis, and that is one video that I did not want to have to do, because that's kind of the breath of fresh air that our industry gets during the summer, is the interaction, like you said, with all of our friends out there at a trade show in person. Plus, it allows me a chance to shake hands with all of the people and, and, and just kind of work the floor a little bit. Um, and I'm going to miss that, but I'm so happy to see what it is they're doing. And they're going to allow a lot of manufacturers to be able to have their time and discuss their new products on that uh, virtual trade show, NMRA show. Is that correct? That is correct. And I think it's a great idea. And it kind of it kind of opens up the hobby again to, to that interaction. Even though we're not face-to-face -face with each other, it brings thousands and thousands of people together in the same venue uh, for new new model train hobby news. That is fantastic. Hats off to Train World. You guys are great. We've had you on a previous show, and just what a great bunch of people out there. Ken and all the guys that work out there, we all love you out there. Yeah. Hey, Ken, I have one more uh, little bit of news here. This is a little bit of a scoop for you but uh, and your audience. So um, a longtime friend, um, and uh, acquaintance in the hobby, uh, great guy. His name is Dan Goins. Oh, and, yes. Yeah, he's the owner of Lone Star Products, and uh, they have a great product line of, uh, of trailers, HO scale trailers. They've got a flatbed trailer, uh, a Wilson grain trailer, and they've got uh, some other uh, truck body kits. And I'm going to have Doug flash these in front of the camera for a minute. But we have a, a little uh, partnership agreement that we're getting into with them. And we're going to be helping them distribute their product, manufacture and distribute their product. So I just wanted to give them a shout out and let them know thanks for all the years of friendship 
and uh, I do believe this is going to be a very mutually beneficial arrangement and it will help get a lot of great product out to a lot more hobbyists here over the next few months. Yes, so, these products, so these products are in stock and shipping now and uh, you know, again we're, we're excited about it. Um, I, I do want to say too that any of your audience that's interested in any Intermountain products um, you know, contact your local dealer. A lot of dealers, even though their storefront's not open, they're accepting orders online. Um, the ones that have not been able to be open, we expect that they're going to get open again very soon. If any of you uh, hobby hobbyists out there, modelers, um, don't have a dealer and need help either locating one or placing a direct order, you can feel free to contact uh, our customer sales associates. Um, they're working every day uh, remotely, and we'd love to be able to help you guys. That is super cool. I know that a lot of folks out there use the NCE system, and we've been using it here a lot too as well. And I'm just, I'm blown away at the fact of what a great power system it is. But there are so many other things on their website. I'm receiving some locomotives this week that need the 21 pin decoders. And that's exactly where I'm gonna find them is on NCE's website because they do work. And another thing that we're gonna be talking about on the next two shows coming up is this train control systems throttle. I've been able to work with it an awful lot in the last 10 days and I'm starting to really understand how it works. And the more I understand how it works, the more I understand how well it's designed. For example, when you put the batteries in, it walks you through live on the screen on exactly how to set it up on your layout. And what is that? what do I mean by that? I mean it asks me and it looks for the Wi-Fi signal in the room. So it automatically found my Digitrax LNY system and it also found my regular router which is what I use for my NCE system. And another magnificent thing about this and James Regeer is going to cover this next week on the show further is that when you set up your consist of locomotives using this throttle and it's all easy to see on the screen it actually reads Decoder Pro on the computer, the JMRI program so that the locomotives that you enter into your consist, it knows and you choose which one's the lead locomotive and it automatically turns off the headlights on the rear locomotives. So, I mean, you have no idea when I'm working with uh, Chris Palomares at Athern and all my engines are set for number three, it drives him crazy that all the headlights are always lit, I get yelled at. Um, but with this, it's not a problem, it does it for me. So there's a lot of cool features about it. And again, it'll work with your Digitrack system and our wonderful L, uh, our uh, NCE system. But the fact is it works with any system that works on Wi-Fi. So this is just an additional throttle for your layout and it's worth looking into. So check it out at their website at Train Control Systems. That's tcssystems.com. Uh, and I did want to talk about that. Also, I've been working very hard on the June and May's videos. In fact, May just came out, and there's an interesting subject matter in May where Carlton Brown from Train Tracks discusses the RFID tags that they make for freight cars. It'll fit on Intermountain cars, it'll fit on Atherton cars, right under the wheel set. And what it does is it allows you during an operating session to detect where your cars are on the layout through your schematics on your computer, it also works with JMRI. Because JMRI is an open platform, it allows a lot of different manufacturers to create and make product to work and integrate their product into their platform. And that's the beauty of working with folks that do an open source platform like what is JMRI. And also in that video, I show the Golden Spike 440s. That's the Jupiter and the Union Pacific 119 in G scale. LGB had brought those by a couple of months ago when I was producing the May show, and that is in that video over at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And the last thing in that video is Campbell Rice. Campbell Rice shows us how to make roads. Now you've seen me make roads out of plexiglass and cement in the past, and they work. But Campbell's come up with a cheaper and easier way to do that using simple paper. And after he weathers them, I'm telling you what, they absolutely look believable and fantastic. So check that out in the maze, What's Neat, over at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. That's on their YouTube channel. And George Bogatok and James Regeer are in the June show. I just finished the edit on that this week. George Bogatuck shows us how to weight locomotives, which is kind of a neat thing because he finds all these little hidden spaces that I didn't know were there and he adds gunshot uh, pellets to them to weigh them down. But James Regeer does an incredible, absolute rebuild of a GP60 ready to roll locomotive from Athern. This is a GP60M in the Santa Fe war bonnet. Remotors it, super details it, adds like a million LEDs all around it 
and he edited and put the entire video together for us. What a great job. So, and that's about 32 minutes long in the June's What's Neat, which will be coming out in about 28 more days. So hang tight for that. Ron, is there anything else on your list that you wanted to talk about? You know what, I think we've covered it. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on the show and uh, just a shout out to all your audience. We love you all. We love you too, man. Keep doing the things you're doing. Tell your father and everybody out there that, I, that we all said hello. And with that, I believe we're gonna close out show number 115, guys. Best hobby in the world with you, the best people in it. This is a show that's made by model railroaders for model railroaders. And with that, guys, let's go run some trains.